I'm Alice Hazen. And just so you know, we are recording. Um, so we have a lot of our board here. I'm a new member of the board and we have several guests, of course, from SURFA and outside of SURFA. And what we are doing today is working with um, two wonderful folks who are active on a lot of different sides of booking and streaming. And they are Louise Baker and Bruce Swan. Um, they not only book Isis Music Hall in North Carolina, but also run Baker Booking, which is a booking agency for artists, um, mostly in the folk world, several of whom I have had the pleasure of being able to listen to their performances at different um, regional conferences and folk alliance. And I'm excited to learn a lot myself because like many of you, I have a website and an EPK electronic press kit, but I didn't know that you could also put out something called a streaming electronic press kit, which uh, in this day and age is a really helpful tool as many of us are still at home streaming and making that a primary way that we reach new people and grow our audiences. So as um, approaching this from both sides of artist booking and booking a venue, Louise and Bruce are gonna talk to us about how we can um, both make our streaming better for venues and audiences like, and also make it easier for venues to see exactly what we offer um, and kind of make the process standard so that we're all speaking the same language and that we're all on the same page with what the expectations are and what we can offer to our venues as we stream. So without further uh, rambling, I'm going to pass this along to Louise and Bruce, let you guys introduce yourselves and, um, and yeah, and start kind of presenting about these ideas that you have. All right. Well, thank you very much, Alice, and to Matthew for being at the controls and Welcome, um, SURFA folks and others. Um, I'm Louise. I think I probably have met almost everyone that's, that's here in participants, but um, maybe if not, we've at least met online. And yes, we're here in Asheville, North Carolina, and my background is both as a talent buyer for Isis Music Hall, the premier listening room in Asheville, North Carolina, and also as a booking agent for about seven years now. Um, and Prior to working at ISIS, I also um, had a hand in running um, Mountain Spirit Coffee House back here at the Unitarian Church. So I've had a lot of experience on both sides, both hiring talent and booking. It's kind of, you know, we say buying and selling. That sounds horrible because we're talking about people, musicians, but it's, it's a, it's a two-way street with the talent. And I'm, I'm so happy to be able to be here today to pass on some information that Bruce and I have put together. And this all kind of came together last fall when we, like everyone else, were learning how to live stream and to understand what that would mean for the music community. And we had to learn different platforms, different words, as you all have had to learn, um, that weren't in our vocabulary prior to March of 2020. And somehow we came up with this SEPK, and we've, we're trying to make it a, a buzzword. Um, and it's, it's working a little bit. We see SEPKs on people's websites now, and it, it's to combine the elements of being able to live stream a concert and put that information into um, your website so that people who want to book you and want to watch your shows can find that information. So I'm going to start off talking a little bit about promotion, and uh, Matthew's going to put a slide up that we put together, and we'll have some of this for you later on. And then Bruce will um, take over after that, and he'll talk a little bit more about other elements. So um, we're going to start with that, and um, I don't know, Matthew, if, if you can enlarge that or draw it down as we go. Okay, that's cool. We'll, we'll, we can go along as we go. So on your website, those of you who are performers, I'm sure you have different elements on your website, your pictures, your information, tour schedule and such, you probably have what we call an electronic press kit, a press kit, something that has your, as we call them, promotional assets. And that's just a little booklet of items that we're going to need to promote you when you come to play at the venue. 
but we are suggesting you add to that your streaming information as well. So these are elements you should have for both. First of all, um, photos. You want to preferably have something that's easily downloadable. Um, landscape, it looks really nice, especially if it's more than one person. Um, a portrait or promotional style picture is, is really good. Try not to do anything that's too vertical. Sometimes I'll have an artist send me a picture of them standing way back and the guitar is down here and I have to crop it out so all you can see is from their shoulder up. So be aware of that when you're selecting the picture. You want something with, with good lighting and something fairly current. You know, if you're 58, don't send a picture of when you were 28, even though maybe you looked better then. Anyway, and also be sure that when you're downloading that or saving it, when the buyer is able to do that easily and that it will prop populate with your name and it will say something like, you know, Louise live, um, Louise portrait with green shirt, whatever. So we're able to easily put those into our file. Next up is a video. Um, most folks now are using YouTube sometimes Vimeo or what have you. And what you want to do is select probably two high quality videos. Again, as current as possible. Um, if you have one that's live that really shows what you're doing right now and what your um, preferences in terms are, are you going to come with a trio? If so, send us a video of the trio. If you're going to come solo, a video solo. Now, if you're someone like Alice here that can do both, you might want to send one of each and say, well, sometimes I tour solo, here's an example, but sometimes I tour with my band and here's, here's a video with the band. Try to use something that has your picture, that you're actually in it. Uh, sometimes we get these very artistic videos with, you know, a little girl running through a field of daisies or a golden retriever or something like that. Um, that's nice and it sounds good, but we can't see you. So we want a video where, you know, you're alive. That's, that's preferred. And check the sound quality. I can't tell you how many times we had videos of bands that have a lot of acclaim and they send in a video and when we um, open it up and start listening to it, the sound quality is really poor because maybe a friend used this in a bar. So play it back and make sure the sound quality is good. Sorry, we just had a little gust of wind here. I was <laughs> checking out. Um, next is music. Send some links to your music. You want to send an MP3 or a WAV file. Again, that's easy to open, preferably not something that's like 11 minutes long. Um, we have used those at Isis Music Hall to create some little promotional videos. So we might take two of your pictures and overlay one of your songs and do a little promo video on our website. So be sure that you include couple of links and again something fairly new and tell us what it is say this is my latest release and it's coming off my new EP so send it that way okay next is your bio um, it's great if you can give us especially a short one 50 words isn't much and those of you who have presented on any of these things know we're asked to send 50 words to put in the uh, catalog for surf or what have you that's hard to do, 50 to 75 words, and concentrate on those power words. Um, and talk about your experience as a musician, preferably not about your latest release. That's another thing that sometimes happens. People will say, here's some information all about my new CD. But they didn't tell me that they also were a Berkeley graduate and they toured extensively in England, or you know, something that might help sell their show. So that's, that's another idea. Now the longer bio I think is important as well, especially for interviews, for press. Um, I do have radio hosts and publicists sometimes that said, you know, I want a long version of their bio so that I can prep myself to do an interview for them. So I, I like to see both, especially have the short one in a PDF that we can grab. Okay, then the next thing is your tour schedule. Hmm. And people are using all different devices within, you know, the widgets sometimes, bands in town and such, to list your tour schedule. Um, 
right now I click on a lot of tour schedules and I see not much and I know that artists have been performing live streams or they're going to be but they haven't been putting them on their website tour schedule put those on there um, when we have our Tuesday night shows we look at the performers website this is our online show to see if they've listed it because it is going to tell talent buyers and fans hey this person is active and they're performing so definitely put those on and if you do a weekly series list that if you play at a farmers market or winery whatever go ahead and list that and put a link if possible to a ticket or at least information on the page of that entity so that they can find you. Um, in can your I, uh, yeah, sure. one, time, one little thing. Yes. Um, for most of our questions, just so everybody knows, I will take keep an eye on the comments and come back to them, make sure, and just to not to interrupt your kind of stream of thought on the presentation. But um, there was one that Mark just asked that is pretty relevant. He just said for bio, how about elevator pitch? Um, I definitely maybe think of these as a little bit of different things, but do you have any thoughts on, you know, how much of an elevator pitch our bio should be? And then, of course, I'll keep an eye on other questions for later. Oh, thanks, Alice. Yeah, that's great. Um, let's get all those questions and we'll answer them at the end of, if we have time. Um, yeah, I think elevator speech is good. And sometimes when we're posting things on the website, we're going to put the bio in, but right in the top, we need that little elevator pitch. You know, one of our artists was lucky enough to have a really great quote from Tom Paxton. And, you know, that's, it could be an elevator pitch. Hey, I, you know, I got to play with Tom Paxton and he said that I was you know, whatever. So sure, a, a little buzz line like that is a good idea. So thank you for that idea, Mark. That's good. Um, yeah, and so just getting back to the tour history, be sure that you are putting where that you've done live streaming. This is a biggie um, with, with Bruce too, because we could look at someone's website and see blank for last year, but they were online every week and they were very active and involved. So we know that their vocal cords and their fingertips have been working. So that's important. Um, quotes, again, you know, you could put some quotes on there from publicists or other artists. And then on the bottom, um, accomplishments, recognition. Um, you might put that, you know, you were a finalist at Kerrville or you won the Songwriter of Washington Award or what have you. I think you know, you don't want a whole page of those, but a few of those on there is, is definitely helpful. So I know that was kind of quick. We can go back over some of those elements, but they're pretty much standard elements. It should be on your EPK with the addition of talking about your streaming tour history. Okay, so um, what I'd like to do now, Matt, is um, I'm going to, if it's okay with Alice, I'd like to share um, Alice's website because she has been working on this. Uh, so let me see if I can do this and we can take a look at what she's done. There we go. Okay. Does everybody see that? We're good? Okay. Um, Alice's um, website is really nice. She's got tabs for all the normal things that you would be looking at, her shows, her bio, information about her fiddle camp and such. And she's created a little area here called the EPK SEPK. And I think that's great that you put slash SEPK until we can all spread the word, right? <laughs> about streaming EPK. Um, and just uh, just go over this very quickly. Um, Bruce and I took a look and we thought she did a great job, good color, good pictures. She's got a nice, um, this is like an elevator pitch right here, right in the top a little quote and just very quickly about what she's been doing with her trio and the surfer board. Um, her photos, the one little thing and we talked about this earlier, um, not easy to download a high resolution and Alice said she's going to check with the way, you know, the website inserts pictures. Everybody has a different format on this. When I clicked to save them, um, they didn't download automatically, but I could save them onto my file, but then instead of saying up at where I go to save it, Alice Hazen 
blue fiddle, it has some numbers. So I'm going to have to go and rename that before I save that into my folder for her. And that's just a little tip. Be sure that your pictures are easy to download, that there's an option to download high res, and that it's going to pop up with a picture that says promo, live, color, black and white, something with your name. Um, her videos were great. She included two, one with her band that looked really fun, right out in the street here, <laughs> which was cool. And there was a little traffic, but it wasn't too distracting. So that was nice because she showed us what she can do in that configuration with her really cool band there. Um, and then I'll just scroll down here. She also included this nice video here that she did for Folk Unlocked, which shows her streaming capabilities and shows the room that she chose to be in and her partner that she was playing with. That's a great example of what she could do. Um, and then in between, she has listed links, hyperlinked right here to her Facebook page, her Friday series, and she has listed her uh, technical equipment. That Bruce is going to talk about that in just a minute. So. I think she did a really great job. Um, just be sure you check, you know, with your download photos. But, you know, as a talent buyer, I could go right here and I could go, oh, I have a picture, I have a bio, I have a good video. Man, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to hire this woman. So, there we go. Anyway, all right. I would like to um, turn it over to Bruce. And Bruce is going to talk about technical and financial aspects of live streaming. Bruce, take it away. <laughs> Thank you. I got the dry topics, but um, you know, one thing I want to stress is that so time is so precious, and decisions are made very quickly, especially from unsolicited um, requests for work. So, if if a talent buyer invited you to submit, that's that's going to be one one kettle of fish. But if you were just simply throwing stuff out to see, you know, who's biting, make it very simple, make it very clear, quick, concise, correct what you're looking for, because the people that are viewing this, um, their goal is to put seats in the seats. So what can you do to help them put seats in the seats and make it easy? The other thing too, is that the person that you've been dealing with on the buying side may not be the person that's doing the promo side. So they, they may be in separate states for all you know. And so um, making it simple to gather information, to help promote your show, to put seats in the seats, is, is key. So let's do talk about some of the technical aspects uh, from Alice's site. We saw what she was touring with or working with. Uh, she uses a Focusrite interface, and these are all good things, and we'll get to them as, we, as it becomes appropriate. We start off with microphones. If you're using an XLR, if you're using USB, your host is probably going to want to know what you're using, uh, particularly if you're broadcasting on behalf of a venue, a house concert series, a charitable organization. Whomever's doing the tech is going to want to know what you're working with because sometimes there's a problem that crops up and you say, oh, yeah, that's right, you're using an interface. Okay, so you're going to have to pump up the volume a little bit on the interface. There's not much we can do from our end, but it's good to know that you have it and that's what you're working with. So that can save us all some time. So if you're using an XLR microphone, what microphone are you using? What's the model? What's the model number? Same thing with USB. And one of the things that this also shows is that you're, you're a professional, that you've got the gear to get the job done, um, because if you ain't got it, it can't be used. You know, we can't, we can't come to the house or go to the closet and grab something because you have to have it. If you're going to be using multiple microphones, that's good to know because then we're going to say to you as we're doing a sound check, what are the microphones for? Are you going to use them for instrument and vocal? You may say, well, it's, we're a trio and we've got this beautiful Ear Trumpet Labs microphone. We're all going to gather around it in sort of uh, bluegrass style. And when, the, when we're harmonizing, we'll step back a little bit or we may step up, but we're only going to use the one microphone. So, okay, we, we get an idea on, on how that's going to work. If you're using multiple cameras, and we'll talk about, as we get a little bit closer to that, about assistance for using those. How are you going to integrate them? Um, are you using a camera that's built into your device, or do you have a separate camera? All good stuff to know, because it, let's say you've said you're going to be using a separate camera, and the, the photo quality is not good. Maybe you haven't set the right camera to your, your uh, operating platform. So we'd be able to say, okay, you, you talked about this camera, is it not working or you're not using it? Oh yeah, right, let's get, let's get the right one on. The more we know, the more we can help each other because remember, we're multi, you, Soundcheck 
you come in off the road, you unload your gear, you put it on the stage, the, the raw stage is already lined up for you, and you can get to work plugging in. But in this case, your sound person or the person that's hosting is not in the same room with you. So these are all things that you want to be thinking about as you're putting these together. What kind of lighting are you using? Are you using ambient light? Are you using um, theatrical lighting? Do you have some decorative lighting? What is your what is your stage? What are we going to be looking at? Is it a neat background? Is it um, something that's distracting? So <clears throat> let's sort of use an example and, and what's going on here. The way Louise and I have presented ourselves this afternoon are completely different, but by design. Typically, we'll be sitting next to one another doing a program in, in this format. But we've opted to be in two separate locations within the same apartment. This is where I typically work. And so by now, you're probably wondering about the badges behind me or maybe the books on my bookshelf or what's going on on this mess over here. What's up? What's happening with this calendar? Who's he booking? Where are they going? What's going on? What are they doing? As opposed to listening to what I'm singing or saying or presenting, it, it becomes a distraction. Whereas if you look at Louise's presentation, it's very simple. It's very elegant. There's some simple focal points, but not a distraction. And look at our attire. I'm dressed as I normally am dressed during the day t-shirt marketing where all my money goes to Sweetwater and a ratty old shirt, but I'm very comfortable in this shirt, but it's not very professional. So if this is how I present myself on stage, then that's, that's fine. If I present myself more polished or more professional, if that's how I feel more comfortable, that's how I should be dressed because that's what people are going to be seeing. So again, this is the idea was to, to present contrast by design. You want to list the platforms that you're familiar with or the ones that you prefer, what you will be working on. Um, <clears throat> and I think that sometimes you'll be dealing with, with folks that are not real flexible in their formats. They may only know OBS or they may only use StreamYard. They may only use Zoom. And so if they don't see that you can do all three platforms, you may be discounted immediately. They may say, oh, I love this guy, but you know, he can't do Zoom, so we can't have him, as opposed to taking a moment to say, oh, yes, they've got, they, they're comfortable on Zoom, or taking a moment to ask you, would you, if we did Zoom, would you take this gig? So putting out as much information as you can is, is important. And let's do talk about some of the features of the, of the different programs. OBS and StreamYard enable you to put messages on the bottom or put little posters up during your performance or have someone do that, which means that you can put your PayPal links, you can put the name of your website, you can put the name of your your uh, current album, you can also put the name of the venue up. And these are things that go a long way to showing and differentiating yourself from others. Same feature in StreamYard. Um, if you work with an assistant, if you have someone that's either going to be with you as a solo artist or as a, as a trio, you've got a sound person or a dedicated person that can either A, help work the, the chat line for you, work the tip jar for you, um, be on hand if there's any technical problems, if they're going to be moving the cameras and, and shifting the camera angles. These are important. It doesn't say that you can't do this. It says that this is a feature that you bring in which will enhance the show. Knowing what you've got makes it a lot simpler. Knowing that someone's going to be there to help you is very comforting. Uh, we work with the th on our shows on Tuesday evenings. There's three of us. Louise and I are in the same room at different ends. And then we have an assistant named Finn who's in Baltimore, who does a lot of the checking for us, puts up the websites, puts up different posts on behalf of the artists. Uh, let's see. So where are we now? Um, find out what platform your presenter has selected for you and then familiarize yourself with it. Know it. Understand how it works. You can save a lot of time uh, in soundcheck if you understand what you're going to be broadcasting. I've said the word soundcheck a couple of few times. I think if you're in, involved in presenting a show where you don't have complete control on behalf of your audience only and you are not afforded a soundcheck, I think you should ask for one because that's when you want to get the bugs out, not showtime. It's no different than being on the road. And that is really what's one of the focal points that we've been putting into this SEPK is that if you treat this as a proper gig, give it the respect that it's due, um, do the work that you would do for a live gig in person, I think you will benefit the, the rewards. I, I failed to introduce myself, and I apologize for that. Uh, Louise and I 
I, I work for Louise at, at Baker Booking. I'm a booking agent, but my background is also in radio and I am a, a DJ. And I just picked up a new gig here in Asheville, North Carolina at Asheville FM 103, which is a trippy station, uh, not dissimilar from the one I came from at WPKN in Bridgeport, Connecticut. I'm also the host of a weekly Tuesday evening stream series, and we've presented some of you, and I think some of you have also been to the show on a, on a regular basis. So that's really my background and what I'm, I'm bringing to, uh, to the table now. The next aspect is even drier, but probably equally as important as the exciting stuff at the beginning of the presentation, and that's the money. That's the financial aspect of what you're doing. For as much as you enjoy being an artist and how lucky you are to be an artist and how lucky we are to work within the industry and to work at venues, it is about the money at the end of the day. And it's not about the money until it becomes about the money. You should have a financial written agreement. What are you going to do? What is the presenter going to do? What are the expectations? How is this going to work? And it doesn't have to be a formally executed contract as you might want for um, a larger venue or a festival. I know that a lot of house concert hosts prefer not to do things in contract form. But this is, if you think of it as a, as a memo of understanding, um, it's a finite single list of expectations that we can all manage. So have a contract, outline the responsibilities of each other, know when you're going to get paid and how you're going to get paid. Same way for the art, for the, for the venue. They should know when they're going to pay you and how they're going to pay you or how you prefer to be paid. Your W-9, if you're lucky enough to make over $600, they're going to want to let the government know. This will help them generate a 1099 for you at the end of the year. Have a W-9 and make it in a downloadable format. You don't have to keep that in your SVPK. You can say W-9 on demand. Um, everybody knows what that means. This is where you can go. It's a clickable link, hyperlink, and you can go right there and get one and fill it out at your leisure and then set it in your uh, as a PDF. Your PayPal links or your payment links are critical to ensure that that's how you get paid. Make sure they work. Make sure that all the letters work in these PayPal links um, that if somebody clicks on it, it's going to get to you. That's important. I had a, a case where I paid the wrong person and it took probably about three months to get the money back to my account. And so I had to pay the artist out of my pocket um, because the money was tied up because we, we made an assumption that was erroneous and um, very aggravating. So make sure these things are correct. We prefer the PayPal me format. It's much more, um, it's easier to hyperlink, download, hover over and get right to it, which is how you get paid quickly. Same thing with Venmo or Square. If you're using Square, have those informations, those bits and pieces, so that they're easy to find and utilize. Finally, your contact information. Make sure you have a web, an email that works, particularly if it's something different than your first name. If it's you at Gmail, then there's a fighting chance. But if your email is, say, mine, the sideshow, 89.5 at gmail.com, there's nothing that really links it to me. So make sure it works, make sure everything is spelled correctly so that you get the offers that you're looking for. Have your web website there, also hyperlink it. If you're working with an agent, identify your agent, particularly if you want the negotiations to go through that agent, put them up there. And then finally, your social media links. So many of the decisions are made before people even see you based on your social link numbers, what how active you are, not necessarily what you're active in, but that you have lots of followers. Remember, we're putting seats in the seats or virtual clicks in, in, on, the, on the screen. And people have lots of choices every night. So a ticket is a commitment. A note on the calendar to click on your, your show is not the same commitment. So make it easy for people to find. Have your metrics up there. Have your numbers easy to find. Hyperlink anything you can for the ease of the presenter. And once again, make sure that these hyperlinks work. Test them because it's easy to make a mistake when you're copying and pasting and perpetuate a bad link. Um, and you may never find out that it's a bad link until you're wondering, I wonder why my website doesn't get any hits. So keep things simple, neat, and organized and updated. If your hair has gotten long, photographs should have you with long hair. If you've cut your hair, have the photographs with short hair. Um, it, it, you are marketing, selling yourself, and once you have been bought, 
the buyer now has to sell you to the audience. Make it easy for them to market and sell you because everybody will come out ahead. You will, your audience will, and the venue will. Thanks so much for listening. I'm sure you have a couple of questions that we'd love to answer. So thank you. And certainly thank you, Alice and, and Matthew, for your um, scrolling along. Thank you. Sorry to keep you so busy. Yeah, those those are great comments. I just wanted to, to add one little note to that um, timely response. It's, it's not actually on the EPK, but because there are some artists here, it's so important. Um, you wouldn't believe the times that I've offered someone a gig and said, but now I need your promotional assets only to have no response or have them say, well, I'm on the road. I'll get this to you in a couple of weeks. And I think if you're on the road and you don't have a device where you can just shoot me a link to your EPK, I'm not sure I want to book you. So, you, you know, it's just frustrating. We're all so busy, but timely response is going to get you on the front of the line to get booked. So I was going to say also <laughs> in, in answering questions the way they're asked is helpful too. You know, please send me the following and it's on my website or it's, it's someplace else. You can get that here. You get that there uh, is not helpful, you know? So thank you. Yeah. So Good anyway, points. Yeah, so we're, we're open to answering questions, and I know that was kind of quick, but the whole point is, you know, we're going to be in the streaming um, for a while. Now a lot of venues are going to be taking another look at what's happening in person, so we want to be sure everyone's comfortable and that, that all these artists out there that you can get booked either in person or online or both. There we go. So. We're open for questions or whatever, Alice. We'll bring it back to you. Thank you, guys. And I've been taking some notes. And I did want to add that um, you guys have made this PDF that you just shared, I think, available to everybody. Um, Matthew, was that, uh, were we going to put that in the uh, comments? I will email that to, to everyone who's registered. I'll email the PDF. Awesome. And uh, everybody stick around because at the end, we're going to have a little drawing for somebody to have a free hour long consultation with Louise and Bruce, which is really generous of you guys. So thank you, Louise and Bruce for that. Um, I've been writing down a few questions. And so the first one, uh, thank you, Mark, for asking about the test stream. Um, I can start off by saying that I enjoy um, having a little online community, I made a Facebook group with just a few Memphis based singer songwriters that I actually know, which is always nice when you're putting yourself out there for the test. And you're not sure if you're going to be the slow speak slug queen, uh, or the high pitched chipmunk voice, which I have been both times on live streams, which really sucked. <laughs> so I can say from personal experience that a test is really important. And um, what I just chose to do is make a Facebook page that was private and invite some folks that I was comfortable with. And then anybody can use that to put their streams, you know, direct your stream, whatever platform you're using, direct that to that Facebook page and just, you know, watch it a couple minutes or an hour before you stream, depending on how on the edge you like to choose to live and uh, make sure that everything sounds good. So for example, like with the um, bit rate, that was the reason why I was either slowed down or sped up. So those were two really, really crazy things that happened to me. I would definitely uh, say, yes, you need a live check, a live stream check. Um, did either you guys want to add to that? We have found that being connected hardwired to the modem, get as close to the modem and hardwire in is exceptional. Trying to turn off as, as many devices as possible to tap into your Wi-Fi will enhance the signal. And sometimes you are just in an area with a crummy signal and that's just that's just the way it is. But you should know that going into you should know what your audience is going to be seeing and hearing before they get there. And so Alice's uh, idea about having a small group, test group, is really important. Yeah, and I, I would add that um, the timing of it, because for instance, when we do our shows on Zoom, we sound check an hour before, and sometimes it only takes 20 minutes, and we just tell everyone, stay in this Zoom meeting. 
don't close it out. Your settings are all intact. Just block your microphone and camera and, you know, go get dinner or whatever you have to do. Um, one of our artists did a did a live stream for another series. They sound checked him the day before. Everything sounded great, but something happened and he went live on Facebook and it was not good. It was not good. So I, I think that's a great idea if you're going to do Facebook, have someone check it or like in the Zoom stream, just stay in that same stream and hopefully if, if all the settings are in place, you'll be good to go. I have two other questions. Um... But everybody feel free to add and you can also put them in the chat and I'll make sure they're heard. Um, I wanted to know, so you had a lot of elements on your EPK that you're looking for, which of course there's the email that artists send and they should you know, include maybe in their, their email to you reaching out some of these elements. But for someone, like if you have a website that has all of those elements in the website, would that be acceptable or do you want to see all those on the EPK page? Just because it seems, I was wondering if it might be a little redundant or make a lot of clutter to have every single thing on that one page or if you prefer to really just have it all on one, one page of an artist's website. Well, I, I can say, speaking from my experience, I, I like it on the one place. I mean, I don't think it's redundant. And we talked about looking at yours. If you can have your tour schedule, you can have just one section that's all videos. That's great. Because if I like somebody, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to look at the video page now and find two or three others. Wow, you know, she's really great. Um, but to have it in one place, it's it's the time factor. And that's why we tried to pare it down to, th to these elements of a really good picture, a video, a little bio. Those are the things that if we can get them from one place, it's time, it's a time saver. I didn't put it on the outline, but I wanted to mention that often um, if someone doesn't just direct me to their EPK, they might send me a link to open a Google folder, a Dropbox folder. I've got them in WeTransfer and other such things. I'm okay with that too if once I open those, it's organized. So if I get a Google file and inside there's a folder that says high-res pictures and there's another one that says current video links. So I know, oh, here's everything I need right there. Um, sometimes I've opened things and I've got a whole bunch of pictures that aren't named. I don't know what they are. Then it's a lot more time for me to get all of that ready before we put it up on, on the website. So I don't mind it being a little redundant. I'd like to see these elements in the one spot but then there can it can be repeated in other places on your website. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. agree with that. It's it's all about simplicity and speed. And so if it's in more than one place, that's that's okay for me. Um, but sometimes will things will be in drop down tabs that you've got to hover over, look for, find, and um, what may be obvious to you may be not so obvious to somebody else. So you know maybe you want to have um, a colleague double check your your your. Facebook page or your uh, website for ease of use. Cool. Thank you, guys. Um, like like me, we had somebody just say that they never it never occurred to them to put their streams on their tour schedule. So I think that's one of I mean, that's one of the kind of newer ways that we can standardize how things look on websites. So yeah, definitely an important thing to include that we didn't all really think about before. I had another question. Um, is there, so for social media, so I was wondering if you put more weight, I mean, of course there's Facebook and Instagram, but are there any other major ones that you kind of put more weight into the following? For me personally, I can't do like a hundred of them. I, you know, it's enough effort for me to maintain like a couple. So what are the most important ones for you? Uh, well, that's a good question. And you know how we all love and hate Facebook <laughs> kind of thing. Um, I def definitely look at Facebook. And I'm not just going to look at how many followers does this, this band page have or, or likes or whatever. I'm going to more look at um, how current is the content is I've gone on some Facebook pages and there it might be sort of a, um, a veteran performer who's got 
you know, 3,800 followers or, or more, but hasn't posted anything for six months, especially with what's happened with us with the COVID turned down. A lot of people were just like, well, what am I going to put up? There's nothing to say. I baked another loaf of banana bread. Put it up there, you know, because then people know you're alive, you're doing stuff. So, yeah, I, I do look at Facebook, Instagram. And another thing, and I think Bruce will want to talk about is mailing lists mm. and newsletters because you have a take on that as well well if you've ever been involved in sales and you've got a great client so this person is your client he's part of your your base but he's also someone else's prospect so keep that in mind every every fan um wants to know how you're doing they they're they're concerned about you i think that a lot of what i'm expressing it was probably a little bit more apropos at the beginning of the pandemic now that people have been out and society is somewhat coming back to some resemblance of order only to be um turned upside down again in the last six to seven ten days so what is the norm i don't know but i do believe that keeping in touch with your fan base is really important let them know what you're doing where you're going to be how you're how you're getting on um I, I brought someone into one of my, my series programs and um, she said, oh, this will be a good reason to do a, a newsletter. And I, I, I said, w w w what do you mean? She said, well, you know, I haven't, I haven't had anything to say in the last six months. So I haven't said anything. It's like, oh man, <laughs> you've got to, you've got to be in touch with your fans. They love you. They want to, they want to know that you're okay. And they, and if you don't tell them you're okay, then they have to draw their own conclusions or they think that you don't care about them. So staying in touch with your base is really, really critical, especially if you're seeking to enhance your Patreon position, if you're looking to start up a tour, if you're looking for a crowdfunding thing. Um, I don't think any of us want to be, um, you know, a friend that people only come to when they're in need. So I think staying in touch with the, with the base is really important. It is one of the reasons that we feature or, or favor working with uh, Zoom because the registrants have to register with a lot of information. We can then build our uh, newsletter base that way. And we do one for Baker Booking every week, and we do a letter for Music My Mother Would Not Like most Friday afternoons to, to push the next show and um, to tell people what we're doing, what's coming down the pike. Nice. I saw some talk about Twitter. Do you guys look at Twitter? I mean, it's kind of hard, you know, for musicians to fully express ourselves, but we certainly can do something on Twitter, share song lyrics, where we're going to be. I don't have a Twitter, so maybe I should get one. <laughs> how much, how much weight do you put in Twitter? Uh, well, I don't use it too much only because it's just one more thing to do, you know, so I've focused, especially with um, my role at Isis Music Hall, more Facebook, um, Instagram, newsletter. Uh, I think Twitter is valuable, you know, a couple of days before the show, you want to spread the word, put a tweet out there, you know, hashtagging local venues. I think that's where it's valuable, but I can't say we have a format um, and if, if you're anybody's interested you can email me and i'll tell you through isis music hall we got so many emails that we finally just and i'm sure artists have found this i direct people to a form on the website to fill out and we do ask to put all your links so if we get something back and there's facebook twitter instagram all that i know that that person's pretty engaged you know on social media sometimes we'll get something back and there's not even a youtube link and i think oh how are we going to book this person they might be a fabulous performer but they're probably either a newbie or a luddite or someplace in between and it's going to be hard for me to promote them so if you have that mindset about you know what is going to make it easy for this venue online or in person to promote me um, but, but I do, I think if, if you have all of those links there, at least we're going to know you're pretty active. Social yeah, media. And also keeping up with these things, as Louise said earlier, if you haven't posted anything in six months, maybe you're not really active on that, on that <laughs> platform. And also for as much as um, we find Facebook annoying, it's one of the best games in town. While they keep changing the rules, it's difficult sometimes, but they've got one of the best games in town and there's not a lot of competition for it. I did see a couple of people put up uh, messages about Twitter, and I've started looking into that 
Um, but it's, it's like everything else. It's one more thing to do. I think, Alice, you were asking for a black and white answer to, um, to the question. I don't know that, the, that these answers lend themselves to black and white. You know, what is the best? I think it's a lot of moving targets. I think it's um, how do you engage with your audience? What's the best way for you? If you're comfortable making quick tweets about what's happening and what's going on, then that's your format and your fans will know it. But I think once you cross over to other formats, then you do pick up other fans. And that's really what it's what it's really all about is increasing that base as best you can for real solid fans. Um, your fans will go down with you. You know, the fans are people that give you money. Everybody else is just a viewer. And fans are the ones that we know will come to the venues, that will buy tickets, that will hang out, will sign um, your mailing list, that will help you bring more people because they're, they're kind of your missionaries, if you will. Indeed. Yeah. And fans and friends are not the same. I always like to remember fans that. Fans and friends are not the same thing. <laughs> fans yeah. will shovel your drive walk. Um, friends will just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I also wanted to add, we do have a publicist, uh, bona fide specialized publicist on our board, and she has been posting in the comments some really helpful things. So Jill, thank you. And um, she just added, you know, Spotify and several platforms to try for folks who are looking to make their website new and improved. Um, I have a few things which I will plug and then I figured it would be a good time to do the drawing for the lucky winner for who gets to chat with you guys. So um, before I do that, I'll just mention a few things that we do these surface sessions every third Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. I mean, sorry, uh, Eastern. I'm in Central time. So 2 p.m. E 2 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central, um, third Thursdays. And uh, I will also add that Louise and Bruce are going to join us again in November for our third Thursday surf session for something that we actually kind of touched on in this um, session, which is contract writing. And I have a friend, Len Lahan, who's a festival um, director, and he has a small farm with music, uh, a music series and stuff that he'll be joining us as well. So for those of you who want to get paid and make sure that you get paid, uh, that's a great one to attend and you can get some contracts um, to kind of copy and and yeah, I think it'll be a helpful session. And the, we do have a mailing list and a newsletter sign up since we also discussed those. We have those for SURFA. So please go to SURFA.org um, for all of the you know new and upcoming information on both the sessions and to sign up for our newsletter and our mailing list. And um, now I'm going to use a little random number generator to look at our list here and see who gets to hang out with Louise and Bruce. All right, number 23. That is, um, oh no, I do not know how to pronounce this name. N-O-N-T-E-T-H-E-L-E-L-O. -E -E I'm just going to let you pronounce your name because I, I don't want to mess it up. Um, are you here? All right. Well, let me do this again. All right, number 18. And I promise I'm I'm doing this in the moment okay. here. Lynn Kuntz. <laughs> All right. Are you here, Lynn? Yes, I am. Yes. Fantastic. All right. Thank Hi, you. Lynn. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to let you guys connect and um, Louise and Bruce, let me just give you guys a big thank you for doing this today. Um, it's been very helpful and it's nice to have friends who are allies of SURFA and are willing to spend their time. And also, um, I just want to add, you know, there's, it's like a rising tide for all boats. Like when you said, everybody can speak the same language and we artists can, you know, reduce the resistance and the obstacles um, in getting ourselves, you know, out there and putting out our information, because I think 
a lot of what you're getting at is making it easy. And when we can make it easy for somebody to write an article about us or book us and find all of our information, that just makes everything go smoother for everyone. So hopefully this is a beneficial thing for everybody. And uh, if you guys wanted to add any closing comments, I'll let well, you guys say anything you'd like. Yeah, I, I want to thank you and the other regions for taking positions of true leadership and offering um, forums for people to gather information, to gather advice, to ask questions and sort of test the waters to see, you know, if what they're hearing is true and what it makes sense. Had it not been for farm, we would not have um, gotten involved in the streaming shows perhaps as early as we did. So I am eternally grateful to what they have done. But it's not just farm, it's the other regions as well that have taken positions of leadership in the community, offered solid advice, and um, given us a forum to speak and to help each other. And I think that that has been invaluable. I can't imagine what these last 16 months would have been like had we not had the technology and the media but also the guidance and the assistance and the support from you guys. So, so bravo for what you've done. And, um, you know, Louise and I have learned so much. So I, I, I want her to have the last word, but um, thank you very much for, for taking some time and thank you for inviting in us and including this with uh, your great group of colleagues. Thank you. I oh. also wanted to say there's one more question that I just saw. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Louise. <laughs> That's okay, let's go. I didn't want to ruin your sign off. Um, how important is it to demonstrate activity on Spotify and that sort of thing? Asks Stephen. Yeah, well, Bruce, do you want to comment on that? Because as a radio host, you're even more up on that. Um, yeah, it's it's difficult. And um, my programming is not always about what's new or what's, what's the hippest. It's... Um, but Spotify is a good indicator of what, what the marketplace is listening to. It's not the end all, it's not the absolute. And, and sure, there's ways of gaming it and um, you know pushing numbers that are not necessarily realistic, but it's a good indicator. You know, if, if you're the only person who likes something, okay, that's gonna be, you're gonna have a bit of an uphill battle. But I think if you see thousands of people are liking the same music that you are, you say, okay, I'm onto something. I suspect my, my listenership will be into it as well. But um, it, it is just a metric. It is like Facebook. It's one of the best games in town. Um, I, I, I subscribe, so I, I don't buy into all the, the low payments to artists that argument that I didn't cut that contract. I'm not responsible for it, but I do subscribe on a monthly basis and use Spotify a lot to discover new music. I had an artist in the in the studio one time and I said something about Spotify. He goes, ah, Spotify. And I said, you know, okay, say what you want, think what you want, but had it not been for Spotify, I wouldn't have found you and you wouldn't be sitting here right now. So, you know maybe that gauges it a little bit. It's easy for me to find new artists and find new music. Um, so is it as important about hiring somebody? I, I don't know. Um, so I, but I'm quite a bit different in, in how I select what I wish to air on, on the radio. No, I, I think that that's totally right. And, and thanks again to, to Jill for her direction on that, that it, it is going to make a difference um, often with local radio too, if they look at who's coming to play at Isis Music Hall and they know they have a presence on Spotify um, and they have a publicist that's been promoting them. I'm sure, you know, Michael probably would agree with that, that it, it is important. So I think, you know, artists having a presence on that and letting us as talent buyers know you know, you can find me on Spotify it is very important. So I think that's a good thing. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to um, echo what Bruce said. We have learned so much working with the various uh, Folk Alliance regions. I grew up as, as a, do you call it surfite? I don't know, I kind of do because I live so close to Montreat, lucky me. And I'd been for many, many years before I graduated to NERFA. Fortunately, I did because that's where I met Bruce and then graduated to Folk Alliance. Not that those are any be better, they're just different. But I, I just really enjoy the community of all the people at SURFA. And I think this experience over this last, whatever it is, uh, 16 months or something, we've all um, grown the community where we're just trying to understand and help each other. I mean, 
Bruce and I, I play the guitar a little bit. Bruce just got one. So I don't know about that. We're not musical, um, creative people like you all are. And your minds are full of that and your time is full of that. We're just trying to help you find a way, an easy way into getting hired. Um, that's where our expertise lie. But we have learned so much from all of the musicians. And it's, it's been such a hard time. But so many have continued to go out there, create, even while they were baking bread, but they've created music, done new albums, and they've let us be part of it. You know, got to say, bragging on our eight clients that you could see at Baker Booking, and I think a lot of you know them, they have been so generous to us when, you know, a year ago we said, hey, if we help you live stream, do you want to do that? And if so, will you cut us into that a little bit financially? I mean, that was a new territory for booking agent. And they said, oh yeah, because we hate doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, we want you to help us find even online gigs. So it's just worked out and that's how we developed this and um, would love to go on to help Surfa any way we can. That's it. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys both so much again. And um, I think this wraps it up. And thanks everybody for watching. And we'll see you at the next one every third Thursday, guys. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. Girls. Thanks, Alice. Good job. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Thanks for be in touch, us. Lynn. <laughs> Bye, everyone.